Hello. Good morning. Oh, it's good morning, yeah, I guess. Yeah. For an this, hour. This is a morning show. It's <laughs> supposed to be. Well, I know, right? but you got a lot of stuff going on today. I didn't know if we were anywhere close to on time. Let's yeah. close. It's before 11. More or less. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome to Family Jewels. I'm Colton Bartell. And I'm Audie Bartell. And we are both graduate gemologists, and we just like to share a little bit of information about uh, gems and gemology and the jewelry industry with you guys. So today we're talking about uh, probably the most widely known purple stone. Amethyst. Yes, amethyst. And, there for, and this is another one I can remember when I was younger, I'm going to say like five or six years old, something like that. And I really liked the liked amethyst mm -hmm. but I didn't know what it was called and when they first told me what it was I'm going nah it can't be right I mean it, but I mean it's kind of a weird well because it was the the main uh, language of the day then was Greek right <laughs> <laughs> and that's maybe one of the first places they found them was like Greece and Italy I think so mm -hmm. uh, now the primary source is Brazil I think they find a lot in Africa. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure, I mean, Bolivia. there's some there's some really good amethysts in the United States. In fact, I think it's probably found almost maybe every country, almost every country. Yeah, definitely every continent. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. But anyway, we're going to spend some time talking about amethysts. We've talked about the quartzes before, um, but we kind of talked about them as a broad group. And so now we're kind of breaking them down uh, category by category, I guess, or stone by stone, I guess you could say. A little more individual. Yeah. And so last week we talked about ones that's uh, really unique in the rutilated and terminated, or terminated yeah. quartz. We're doing the terminated. Yeah, we're doing it terminated because it, yeah. it doesn't sound right the other way. No. But we already discussed that. So yeah. anyway. Um, we are going to be talking about amethyst. Um, this one, you know, whenever people come in and ask for purple, this is usually the first one that people yeah. go to is I'm trying to think amethyst. If, this is probably the most natural purple stone there is. Um, yeah. you know, there's purple sapphire and sujolite and uh, iolite, but not quite as purple purple is what purple 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 <laughs> well there's like great garnet purple, purple. too but uh so this one this is actually a, a part of a geode a geode a geode well, I mean, it's, just, it's still early it's like a it's like a chia pet it's just a rock it's <laughs> yeah. a geode it's a geode <laughs> this is a geode and this is part of a geode yes um this is one we bought in tucson oh man at least 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. Um, and these are not uh, gem quality crystals, but if you can kind of imagine, this would have been um, a geode or a bug, I guess, or whatever. But this is just part of it. Yeah, um, so this thing had to have been like massive. Yeah, and I don't know. It could have been skinny. Uh, if it was kind of a round one, this would We're have We're not been, judging. This, is, this would be really big. Uh, some of these... Some of these crystals are pretty good size. I've yeah. seen them. Bigger. You got some of these points in here that are really large. Yeah. So, but it's kind of to start out with. You can see it's still a nice, rich purple color. Yeah. And I've got that a little ways. The cross section of this is really cool too, because you can see basically kind of the the yeah. microcrystalline structure here in the in the outer part. And, and it's colorless. Uh, the yeah the rock crystal quartz there towards the bottom. Then we get some iron in there and maybe a little manganese or whatever and we start to get the purple. Yeah. So, yeah. so the impurities, just like in a lot of stones, is what's causing the amethyst to be, and I can't say none of this, amethyst to be purple. <laughs> and those impurities are normally probably iron, but could be a possibility of a little manganese to cause it. So before we start doing these, are we going to have to do like, you know, the telecasters? <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, the other thing I was going to kind of show you, this is... Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I mean, I think I could do that, but I'm not going to try it. 
Okay, so this is a, a really light amethyst crystal. With a phantom. Does, Does that have a phantom, phantom in it? Yeah. No, I think it's just a little... Oh, from this side it looks like a phantom crystal. Yeah, but it's not. It's oh. just... I'll show it this way where you can't, can't see it. Well, you can still see it, can't you? Yeah, a little bit. Well, anyways, this <laughs> is a uh, amethyst crystal, a light light amethyst crystal. Light amethyst. That has, this is for those that are on a diet. Yeah. This is the light amethyst. Pure calories. Yeah. Pure iron. <laughs> this would be a... What do they call it when you're low? And this is so would this be one. would this be based on a 2,000 carat day, daily diet instead so yeah. of 2,000 calorie? Yeah, because this wouldn't be this wouldn't need to be 2,000 carat. Right. So this would just be a portion of it. Right. Yeah. Right. And I don't know how much you have. This to is have one. A day. This would be one serving. But, you know, from a jeweler's standpoint, it's at least 10 carats a day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways. The other thing that's been done is this is a double terminated quartz crystal, amethyst quartz crystal, but it's been enhanced a little because the crystal faces have been polished. But the amethyst crystallizes in the hexagonal system, but you can kind of like turn it this way, I guess. And, oh, you can see my other amethyst I got off. So it's actually. Actually, Carla's Carla's ring, but uh, over here, like King Henry the Eighth, or whatever. So. yeah, you know, on this one you can just <laughs> see the Jews. just see the points that. Uh, okay. Okay. We're doing musical chairs now today, but anyway, um, yeah, amethyst definitely the most popular of the purple stones. Um, Several reasons for that. One is obviously the purple is really vibrant. Um, it's a root, real true purple. We're going to try and show these as best we can here. But you've got real true purple in here. And since there is a fairly large quantity of this stone, being that it's quartz, it's got good hardness, it's got good clarity, and it's got really good color. And the best part about all of that is, is it's fairly abundant, uh, considering that it is a gemstone. Um, there's a lot of it out there, so it's relatively inexpensive, which is nice. So you can get larger stones with unusual cuts. You can kind of see on this one, we've got kind of a fantasy checkerboard cutting on that stone. And um, kind of really glitters a little bit. And so, like for instance, like this one, um, this is nearly a 30 carat amethyst and it's 2400 bucks you know if you were to do that with any other type of stone you're talking several thousand so um, and then you get into some of these others and I mean it's just it's kind of amazing you got this really pretty one here really pretty trillion that one's uh, carat three-quarter and it's 125 bucks I mean there's not many stones out there that you can buy for that little a price that have such vibrant color. They're really clean, they're durable, and you can get them in a ton of different shapes and sizes and stuff like that. You can even get them in beads. <clears throat> so we got like an amethyst bead bracelet. It's really pretty. And kind of give you an idea on that, um, you know, 75 bucks for this bracelet. So. With amethyst, you can get really pretty stones, really cool shapes, nice and clean, vibrant color. Um, you can make really cool statement pieces and stuff like that and not be spending a fortune on them. Um, this is one that we're going to show because one thing is, is um, from an art standpoint, uh, if you're looking at this uh, as far as the colors go, Amethyst looks really, really, really good in yellow gold, especially high carat gold, 18 carat, 22 carat gold. You get a really rich tone in that yellow, and you mix that with purple, which these are actually complementary colors, so they always look good together, just like red and green, blue and orange, and so on. And so with uh, purple and gold, it has almost that sense of royalty to it. Um, obviously, since purple is usually associated with royalty, but it just has this beautiful combination here with the yellow gold and the amethyst. 
So, um, this is a great song. Like I said, it's fairly durable. It's got good hardness. It can take a really good polish. Cutters really like to cut this stuff just because it's 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 readily available. Um, it's almost always really really clean, so they don't have to worry about running into inclusions and stuff like that that could jeopardize the cutting. And um, the other thing is too is you know it's just one of those deals that if you've got a designer that's wanting to use a really vibrant stone, keep costs down, and be able to mass produce, amethyst is a great great outlet there because. Um, like we said, there is a lot of it out there, and the the crystals are good size a lot of the time, and so we can get calibrated stones, which means that we can make nice matched pieces and stuff like that. And uh, it's just a fun stone to work with. Um, you can get a big look for a little price and everything, and um, it's you know it's a natural stone. There is a synthetic out there that is grown through the hydrothermal process, which kind of recreates the natural way that this forms. And these form in little pockets um, that are basically superheated liquid. And as it cools and solidifies, it's kind of like whenever you did like a science experiment and you dissolve salt or sugar in water and you, as you let it dry and you put a string in there, it kind of crystallized, kind of like rock candy. And this kind of does the same thing in um, in these geodes that are basically like miniature pegmatites, pretty much, because they're little pockets that have these crystals solidifying in them. So the sediment is actually uh, accumulating with like elements in here to form these crystal faces. And uh, so as it cools and dries, the uh, from these basically superheated pockets of uh, water that's just saturated with this material, uh, these crystal faces start forming. And a lot of times, in most cases, it does start out as this clear uh, or white, what we call rock crystal quartz, which is the colorless version of quartz. And uh, then from there, depending on what the impurities are that are in there, um, you're usually going to get either amethyst or citrine. But, um, and we'll talk more about citrine, but it primarily occurs just in one place, which is in Bolivia, in South America. And so, um, with amethyst, it's, like I said, it's pretty readily available and it's found I'd, pretty much on every continent. Uh, in most countries, it can be found in the United States. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly where. I'm going to say probably uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, maybe a little bit in Utah and Nevada. But um, I know that there's been, there's been a lot of this found in a bunch of different places, but um, you can get some really cool pieces. We've seen these amethyst geodes so big that you may, and you can stand in them. They could be like a bathtub, which would be really, really cool. But um, yeah, just a fun stone, um, very inexpensive stone, not cheap, but inexpensive and just really beautiful. They can come in a bunch of different shades, um, like we showed you this uh, doubly terminated one here that's pretty light, and then you can get into a deep, deep purple here. We really like them whenever they get that deep, deep purple and then have like a little bit of a red flash in there. That's really the nicest primo stuff. And so uh, there is some variation there. Uh, we also have stones that we call ice wine quartz and it's actually half amethyst and half rock crystal quartz. So it's actually purple and white that are really cool. And then you can also get uh, ametrine, which is half amethyst and half citrine, uh, which does occur naturally. But um, yeah, beautiful stone. I encourage you guys to come check them out. We've got a lot of amethyst here at Suzanne's for you to check out and um, a lot of loose stones actually so if you were wanting to put something together custom we've got a lot of them to pick from and then we've got a lot of them available that we can get if we didn't need a different size or a fantasy shape or something like that we can have them custom cut as well so that's kind of wrapping it up a little bit on amethyst um, there is 
there is more about them, but uh, that's pretty much the general knowledge with them. If you are shopping for amethyst, the best thing to do, obviously you want to get one that's pretty to you, but traditionally you want to go with a very highly saturated color uh, of purple in that stone and make sure that that color is even toned across the whole stone because they can have what's called color zoning where it can be darker in one area and lighter in another and you can actually see that difference as you look at the stone. So you want something that's pretty evenly colored and you want something that's cut well, that's nice and bright. Since this stuff is so readily available, it's it's kind of frowned upon if it's not cut well because there's no there's really no excuse for that. So come by, check them out. We've got a lot that we can show you. If you guys have any questions, feel free to give us a call here at Suzanne's 361-991-7565, or you can stop by our store, 4226 South Alameda, right next to Town & Country Restaurant and the Town & Country Shopping Center here in Corpus Christi. But uh, if you want to learn about any other gems or anything else about jewelry, check out our other videos right here on Facebook. And uh, you can also check them out on our website, suzannes-jewelers.com. Or you can check out our YouTube channel. And uh, we've got a lot of videos on there that you can catch up on past episodes. So thank you guys for joining us. Have a happy Halloween. And we will see you next week. Bye.